Hey everyone, here is the second video of our aquifer test series. So in the first video we talked about what an aquifer test is, the basic premise, um, why we conduct them, and the sort of data that we collect, right? So just as a recap, remember we have a pumping well in a confined aquifer here, and we pump it at some constant flow rate Q for a sustained duration, maybe 24 hours, 48 hours, etc. And then we collect uh, data from that test. So we collect the pumping rate, the rate at which we're pumping, and then the drawdown we are seeing in our pumping well and our observation wells, right? So at T0, time zero, before we start our test, we have zero drawdown. So what does that look like on our, on our distance, or our, sorry, our, our drawdown graph up here? T0, drawdown is zero, so that's right there. And then maybe at T1, we've drawn down our well, maybe, let's say, let's say three feet. And then say at T10, we've drawn it down maybe four feet. And then at T100, we've drawn it down maybe four and a half feet. And then at T1000, maybe we get to five feet, something like that. Let me redo those, those are a little inaccurate. So four and a half, and then five. So what we're left with is this drawdown curve, what we call a drawdown curve, right? And the drawdown curve can tell us a lot about our aquifer. Okay, so that's what the curve looks like. And what you're seeing is that the slope of this line is decreasing over time, right? So we're still having drawdown occur over time, but the, the rate at which we are experiencing drawdown decreases substantially as the test goes on. And so why does this happen? Well, if you think about it, at T0, we're not pumping anything. So what is our radius of influence in this well? It's zero, right? We're not reaching out into the aquifer um, at all. After one minute, we've maybe reached out, let's see, maybe this radius, okay? Who knows what that radius is, um, but it's, it's small. At T10, we've reached out a further distance, right? And then at T100, we've gone out a further distance, and so on and so forth. And let me redraw these colors. That's maybe not the best way to do it. Let me do it this way. So at T1, our radius of influence is that. At T2, our radius of influence looks like that. And remember, we're working in a three-dimensional um, setting here, right? So imagine this has sort of a, a disk or a saucer that we are we are accessing this aquifer. And then at T100, um, we're even further out. And then T1000, even further out. And you get the gist, right? So as the, the aquifer test continues throughout time, we're accessing a larger portion, a larger volume of our aquifer material. So what does that mean? That means as our radius of influence expands, and as we reach out into the aquifer, we're accessing more water, right? We have more water to come into our well as our induced um, radius of influence from pumping expands out into the aquifer. So that's why you get this flattening of the drawdown, because you, your, your drawdown is going to decrease, or the rate of your drawdown will start decreasing as you start accessing more water. And I think Conceptually, that probably makes sense to you. You know, if you have just a small, just think of it like a small cylinder here. And if that's the only portion you were accessing, just say you were, let's say you had a straw in a glass and you just started sucking on the straw and the water in that glass would just draw down until it was empty, right? Well, let's say you, your glass somehow can magically expand and you continue sucking water out of it. What will happen is, as your and this is kind of a weird thought ex, thought experiment. I just kind of thought of this: as your glass, your drinking glass, expands out, you're getting more and more volume of water coming into your glass, right? So your glass gets bigger and bigger, and but you're still sucking at the same rate. You're still sucking at you know whatever you suck water through a straw at, but you have more water to go into that glass because your glass is getting bigger. So your 
drawdown in your glass, how much water or how how low the water gets in your glass is going to start decreasing, right? It's going to the more water you have coming into your glass because your glass is getting bigger, the less drawdown you're going to see in that glass. And hopefully that conceptually makes sense to you. Um, and if it doesn't, let me know and I'll maybe try to explain that a little better. So anyway, that's why we see this flattening of the drawdown curve. Now is a good time to introduce the concepts of steady state and transient state. So we'll start with steady state flow. So steady state means that throughout time, throughout our aquifer test, we're going to reach some level, some time, where we don't see any further drawdown. Okay? So let me, let's draw that out. T0 is there. T1, maybe we see 2 feet. T10, maybe we see 3 feet. And then at T100, we see 4 feet. And then that's it. We don't see any further drawdown in our well, no matter how long we run this test. So T1000, we still see 4 feet. T10,000, uh, same, 4 feet. We're not drawing down any further. And then on into eternity. Okay? And so what you're seeing is that this this curve, let me draw it this way, this curve is not only flattening out like in our last example, but it's going flat, completely flat. The slope has reached zero. There will be no further drawdown in our well. This is what we call steady state. And if you think about it conceptually, why is this occurring? Well, as our radius of influence in our aquifer expands out, we reach some point of recharge to our aquifer, to our well, and we'll call that Q in, that can keep up with our Q out up here. Let me change the colors there. So we've reached a point where our Q out, as a result of pumping, equals our Q in. Okay, let me make this fully, there we go. So Q in will equal Q out. So the water coming into our system, uh, the, oh, sorry, the, the rate at which water comes into our system equals the rate at which we're taking it out. Does that make sense? And that's why we see the flattening of this drawdown curve. We've reached a steady state. We're almost in like a loop, if you want to think of it that way, right? Think of like your, you have your glass, if we want to look at our glass analogy, You've got your, your, your glass of water <clears throat> and everything you're sucking out, you're spitting it right back in. So you're just in this loop and you're not seeing any further drawdown. Okay, so that's steady state. So this is really kind of a, a theoretical concept. This isn't really what happens in nature. Typically we'll see increased drawdown, or we'll see drawdown continue over the course of our test or we'll see drawdown start to decrease. And we'll get into that in a minute here. But that is what we call transient state. Okay, so transient state is like what we showed you earlier and what we've been explaining, where we see, and I'll switch colors back, where we see, you know, T0, zero, zero drawdown, T1, two feet, T10, we'll see three feet, T100, maybe three and a half, T1000, we'll see four, T10,000, maybe we'll see 4.5, 4.2, maybe 10, maybe 100,000, we're at 4.5. So while this curve is flattening, right, because we're reaching out in our aquifer, we're accessing more and more water, it's never going to go completely flat like we saw in the, the steady state, right? It's never going to, the slope will never equal zero. That's never going to happen in our transient state. So this is what we call transient. And this is the more realistic um, situation in nature. We see this more often, or this is what we see in nature. I don't, I don't know if we get steady state in nature. I mean, we can approximate it and kind of um, say that we're at some steady state, but in, in all reality, we are always in a transient sort of condition, okay? Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. So we've talked about the drawdown curve um, and how that works. We've talked about transient versus steady state. And now I think we're ready to move on to the concept of boundary conditions 
and how we can assess boundary conditions by doing an aquifer test and looking at the drawdown data. So we'll cover that in the next video, um, which will be just the next video in this, this series, this playlist. So we'll see you in that one.